everyone, I'm Alessandra Rocco and I am a VD2K Lynx Summer Fellow here at the Mayan Lab and my project this summer was predicting novel targets and drugs that could be associated with autophagy, either inhibiting autophagy or inducing autophagy. And I'll explain what autophagy is. I, even before coming here, I was like, what is autophagy? So I will go into that further. <laughs> So autophagy is a natural catabolic process in which long-lived lipids or misfolded proteins are digested by the lysosome through transporting them through an autophagosome. And uh, it is often induced by stress such as high cellular calcium, hypoxia, starvation, or even just exercise. I definitely was undergoing some autophagy this morning as I was preparing for my presentation. <laughs> so um, the induction of, of autophagy is obviously by stress, and then that inhibits um, a protein kinase called mTOR, and that activates ULK1, which is an aut autophagy-associated gene. And then further along, that causes the double membrane vesicle called the autophagosome to develop with the help of some other autophagy-related proteins and genes. And then it fuses with the lysosome, and then within the lysosome, the degraded proteins um, are degraded and then are recycled. So autophagy is really interesting because it has many links to different conditions and diseases, and um, I specify cancer and neuro neurodegenerative disorders and also aging. So autophagy is linked to cancer is rather ambiguous as there are, some can, there are some cases in which increased autophagy can prevent the generation of tumors since it's um, based in genomic integrity, since it degrades misfolded proteins and could prevent the mutation of cells. Um, but it also could prevent, I mean, it also could support the growth of tumors by, in, by being stimulated, as you can see in this graph here, as um, autophagy is stimulated because tumors want more nutrients so it's like, so the cell thinks that it's the under starvation but it actually just needs more nutrients and it's the tumor cell so yeah so that's how autophagy can be linked to cancer and it's still kind of confusing um, for researchers it is also linked to neurodegeneration because if autophagy is deficient in some way it can cause aggre uh, the aggregation of proteins and this is one of the underlying causes of neurodegenerating neurodegeneration um, so autophagy has been linked to parkinson's disease alzheimer's disease and huntington's disease and hopefully the induction of autophagy can prevent the aggregation of these misfolded proteins and neurons. Autophagy has also been linked to aging, so it's a really interesting process. Um, so it's been linked to longevity as well, since as we age, our autophagosomes become more fragile and have issues binding with the lysosome for these um, misfolded proteins to be digested. It's possible that these accumulations of misfolded proteins can lead to um, a decreased longevity. So hopefully by increasing autophagy, we can thus increase longevity and live forever, even though that would not be great for the population <laughs> density. Um, so my approach was um, developing a consensus signature for autophagy through analysis of expression data as well as pre-existing um, associations with autophagy. And through that consensus signature that I developed, I inputted the data to L1000FWD to get some predictions of drugs that might be associated with autophagy, as well as G3 to get some transcriptures, trans uh, sorry, transcription factors that might be associated with it. So I utilized Geo, which is an NCBI platform that contains an archive of expression data from hundreds and thousands of researchers. And there are about 350 studies that mentioned autophagy in the abstract. And so I wanted to narrow that down a little bit because some studies weren't um, very specific enough to autophagy. So um, I made some criteria to kind of filter out the unnecessary studies. And in addition, I utilized the Harmonizome API that was developed by the Mayan lab to get some literature-based studies, that, as I call them, which are from gene ontology, wiki pathways, keg pathways, among others. And then I also queried the gene shot database with autophagy to get about six gene sets, five of which were predicted through Argus 4 Tagger, Enricher, Autoriff, and Gene Riff. So using Damon's fabulous clustering similarity method, <laughs> um, I was able to um, develop this heat map with a bunch of the RNA-seq studies that I extracted. Um, along with the literature that you can see up on the top there, and there's a cluster of the literature, which makes sense because they're kind of all like res like, like crowdsourced from similar platforms, so they, a lot of them have similar genes, but also there's some upregulated gene sets from the studies that I collected. So I thought that was interesting as those studies probably induced autophagy. So I, can, uh, so I made the consensus signature by going through all the RNA-seq studies and seeing which ones had the most similarity with the literature-based studies since those had a pre-established connection to autophagy. And so I submitted that data to Chia3 using the upgenes because I was more interested in uh, transcription factors that could induce autophagy. And so here it is the list of the top 10 and I want to point out to you that I found particularly interesting. 
So ZNF444 was the second rated uh, transcription factor, and I thought this one was particularly interesting because it activates a gene that de um, degrades lipoproteins, which are these soluble proteins that carry lipids and fats throughout the body. And since it's involved in the degra degradation, I'm like, oh, maybe it has something to do with the lysosome, and maybe this further linked autophagy. So I thought that was interesting. And also mutations in this transcription fa factor can also then lead to uh, chondrosarcoma, which is a bone cancer um, that develops in cartilage cells. So I thought that was interesting. And even though this one is like the 10th rank uh, transcription factor, so it's not proven to be the most similar, I thought it was really, really interesting because it's related to um, FOXO4, which is the top rated transcription factor for the gene shot list of autophagy related um, genes, which is like shows a pretty good association. And mutations of the gene CIC is often caused, um, it often is results in round, round cell sarcoma, so it's another link between autophagy and cancer, and also I thought it was interesting that it was related to FOXO4. So then I submitted the data to L1000 FWD to get some drugs that might be associated with autophagy, either inhibiting it or inducing it. Here's some drugs that are shown to be predicted and hopefully induce autophagy, and I'm going to point out two drugs here, and homoherentinine is featured twice because it, um, the way L1000 FWD works is that they have uh, predictions with different cell lines and different dosages. And I'll explain a little bit more. So homoherentinine is a recently FDA approved drug for treating chronic myeloid leukemia. So I thought that was another interesting link between autophagy and cancer. And CD1530 uh, is a retinoid um, receptor agonist. And those have been known to either induce differentiation with tumor cells or even um, causing apoptosis um, within tumor cells. So I thought that was another interesting link between autophagy and cancer. And this, this is a list of drugs that potentially inhibit autophagy or reverse, reverse the effects. And I thought the MEK12 inhibitor would be interesting to look at because it silences the MEK-dependent cell signaling pathway. And that's related to the RAF, RAS, um, EK, and DRK pathway that is shown to be um, related to cell growth and cell proliferation. And it's been shown to be overactive in cancer. So that's another link. Potentially reversing autophagy could kind of prevent tuberogenesis. And then I thought it'd be interesting to see if any of the genes in the um, consensus signature overlapped with the eliminating the druggable genome protein list, which is a big list with a bunch of dif uh, different understudy protein kinases, genes, and other things. And so there are an overlap of 11 genes in total with the consensus signature, six from the upset and then five from the downset. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at this and kind of inform the public of some genes that might be interesting to look at. So in conclusion, um, throughout this summer, I was able to predict a bunch of transcription factors and drugs that might be associated with autophagy and uh, inform researchers of different paths to take in understanding autophagy. It's very it's still an ambiguous pathway, and we'd love to learn more about it. And um, I hope to continue this research and get a bigger sample size and potentially adjust the consensus signature along the way. And um, hopefully we can collaborate with an assistant professor of pharmacology, um, Dr. Michael Lazarus, who has done plenty of research on ULK1 and would be an amazing resource. So yeah, I wanted to thank everyone in the Myron Lab, particularly my amazing mentors, Megan and Kathleen. They're the lights of my life, amazing people. <laughs> and also uh, Dr. Ryan for being an incredible resource as well as Sherry for organizing everything and my amazing summer fellows. Thank you. Thank you.